Okay, hi, I'm Elliot Fishman. Welcome to Chat GPT Talk for today. And I'm on my computer, which doesn't seem to flip. Here we go, all right. Um, a couple things, one is uh, Sarah and Lily told me to remind you that uh, we thank everyone who voted for us. We are now a finalist. Our app on uh, the chess with cinematic rendering is now a finalist for the Ant Mini for best app. And hopefully we will win. It's one against us against somebody else. Uh, we're, we're real better, but hopefully the voters will pick us. Okay, that's one thing. And uh, second thing is we are working away. We're in October. Hope everyone is doing well. Weather seems to be pleasant. There's no storms on the horizons. Hopefully everyone has a great end of week and a great weekend. And I could see uh, John Biacchino is saying hi from home. Hey, John. And um, also, uh, Lily just posted CTSS The Chest Atlas. Hannah Recht was the senior author with us on that. Uh, really, really good. I think it's a great teaching module. Well worth your time, and it's for free. Okay, what well, more can you ask? Now, what is, what is ChatGPT? It's an LLM. That's probably the right term, large language model. And it is part of AI, and it's taking the the AI to a new level. And the reason is, first of all, um, I'll just tell you that um, some of what I'll quote will be from Matthew Lundgren, who's one of the real stars in AI, but especially in ChatGPT. And he spoke to us about it last week. He's at Microsoft uh, and uh, from Stanford. He was trained at Duke. Just great to see a radiologist doing so well. Uh, he made the point that it's the fastest growing application. I have seen charts myself that it reached a million in days, literally hours. Uh, it, it reached 100 million global users faster than anything from TikTok or Instagram or Uber or Spotify. It's just everybody, every age, every job, everyone is interested in it. It's a way of thinking and rethinking about how we deal with information. If you talk about um, radiology, <clears throat> we're talking about medicine in general, ChatGTP is able to read and learn. So it can look at a patient's chart and potentially tell you all the important information. You've seen articles where it looks at charts and can make diagnoses. There was an article last week where 17 referring doctors cannot make a diagnosis, ChatGP can. Article published, ChatGPT was able to get a high number of the New England Journal of Medicine cases correct in the right differential, which is really hard if you've ever tried to do them. You've seen with ChatGPT, the fact it didn't study or wasn't prepared specially and didn't have all the tool set available, still was able to pass the boards for internal medicine, for dermatology, for radiology which is just something unbelievable. It's one thing to learn chess, you learn all the rules, you study all the games. You can't do that for medicine. And they didn't have all of the different bits of information and they weren't at this point looking at images. ChatGTP now is gonna look at images, it's gonna to listen to voice, it's gonna be able to build on top of things. These large language models, um, what's interesting Many things, as it gets bigger, gets worse or slower. As they get bigger, they get better. Uh, one of the challenges, the GPT 3.5, the early one where people would talk about hallucinations and errors. Four is not just 0.5 better than 3.5. It's like an earthquake. When you go from a seven to 7.5, it's logarithmic scale. The GPT-4 seems to be maintaining its 100% accuracy regardless of the problem and it's continuing to learn. Uh, it also has learned not just words but also emotion. There was an article published in JAMA, I believe it was, which showed that uh, when patients would ask questions, the chat GPT on its own would show more empathy than, than physicians would show, which is kind of both good, bad, and scary all at the same time. Um, it's been able to answer social media questions and deal with patients at a patient level. 
And now the thing about it with LLMs and this chat GPT, it's really at the beginning. It's kind of like you haven't even reached you know, first grade yet. And it's so good, think about as it continues to learn and as it continues to get experience, and then you train it for specific tasks. Um, ChatGPT has not trained for specific tasks, but that's where it's going. Can it go into an epic chart and pull out all the information? Can you be talking to a patient and the um, ChatGPT listening and then putting out a progress note? People have done that for being able to write notes, thank you notes, people are doing it now, I've heard, for um, writing recommendations for people. ChatGTP writes it really well, you give it a few facts, the next thing you know, you have a great recommendation. So your life may depend on ChatGPT. In um, Matthew's talk, and you'll see hopefully an article about that in uh, JSAR in the near future, it's a transformative application in the domain of radiology. The ability for radiologists to continue to learn, to deal with patients, to deal with charts, can it help us in the differential diagnosis? Can it build in the information we know and look at not just the clinical, but the lab values, the path data, and help us come up with better answers and better differential diagnosis? Can it help us pick up subtle findings we talk about many of the things, augmented interaction, grounding stage, uh, all of the things that run with ChatGPT and LLMs. We talk about whether it's for choosing protocols or choosing contrast, or the whole supply chain is something that ChatGPT may be, ever be able to do. ChatGPT, because it is cost effective, and I think it will continue to be very, very cost effective, can help cut down on the costs of having a lot of extra help, can probably get rid of a lot of administrators who take up a lot of the oxygen and don't always add to the process beyond adding to the costs. I think one of the things that ChatGPT potentially can do is decrease burnout for radiologists and all physicians. Remember, more than half physicians now say they want to quit in the next two years. And one of the reasons is overwork and overwhelming paperwork. Well, hopefully we can get rid of a lot of the paperwork and improve quality. We're always afraid of decreasing quality. I think this is one of the things that potentially can improve quality. So it's very exciting. The potential here isn't just about, and I'll give you a quote, improved diagnostic accuracy, but about fostering a more integrated team-based approach in patient care. In essence, the evolution of LLMs as projected signifies not just a leap in technology, technology, but a potential paradigm shift in radiology and how we do things as a field, how we approach diagnosis, research, and patient care. I think it's very exciting. <clears throat> I think you should read about it. We do post articles about it. There's a lot of work coming out of JAMA, a lot of work New England Journal of Medicine, and a lot of work coming from radiology and radiology AI. I think it's very exciting. I think now is the time to learn about it, and you can do it yourself. You can test it, ask questions, get the software. Right now, it's um, you know Microsoft with ChatGPT, but you know you're seeing Bart from Google. You're going to see a lot of things from Apple, Amazon, other companies. The direction is very clear where we're going. It's going to be outstanding. It's going to change everything. So with that, I hope we excited you. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day. And to let you know, this was not written by ChatGPT, but someday you may not know if it's me or ChatGPT. See you later.